Good morning and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is loss. We get to look at the dynamics of loss and the stories we tell ourselves that make the hurt and pain deeper and those that ease our, our suffering and promote our healing. So um, before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding into your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, and bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, electrifying and illuminating all your cells, all your electrons, all your molecules, and lighting you up from the inside out. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, any stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's just gently press our palms together very softly, softly, softly rub your fingers against your palms to feel the deliciousness of that wonderful sensation bringing you present right here, right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So um, today's topic is loss. And um, yeah, I didn't intend to cry. I didn't know how this was gonna be today. Um, Yesterday was my birthday and uh, Maggie flew away. I don't know. I don't know if she'll be back. Um, so I've been going through lots and lots of emotions and um, I, I um, lots of stories and falling into just grief and despair and also um, connecting to the possibility of the miraculous. So um, I've put her cages on the roof where I, I don't even know how she got out. You know, I was looking around my house for a long time before I realized that she must have gotten out. And um, good morning, Rosalyn. Welcome. It's good to have you here. Um, Maggie flew away yesterday, and I don't, I don't know if she'll be back. And um, it's interesting because I had conversations with other people before Maggie flew away about loss and. So that's our topic today. Um, the stories we tell ourselves to that deepen the hurt and the stories we tell ourselves to ease, ease that pain. Thanks, Tori, thank you. Um, I know, I know some of you out there are animal communicators and, and some of you talk to angels and I would really love to have her back, frankly. Um, so anything you guys can do to help, that would be awesome. Um, a real tremendous gift yesterday was um, that I called the people that gave her to me and they were so gracious and loving and talked about how it was her opportunity to really be a bird, you know, to really fly as high as she could fly. And, and uh, just be a bird. So it would be great if she got to be a bird and decides to come home. Anyway, I forgot to get tissues. <laughs> um, so loss, uh, I, I was revisiting loss with some friends um, who are celebrating the passing of, of a loved one and, and loss of 
of memories, loss of pictures and memorabilia and, and possessions that were treasured from, from people that passed. And uh, it's, I, I said in our conversation that the thing that helped me to move through these losses, first of all, is obviously to feel the feelings. Um, and there's so many mixed feelings, you know, like I, I, I do believe in miracles, you know, I do believe that um, the universe unfolds with, um, with wonderful magic. Thank you, Rosalyn. Rosalyn says, I'll ask Linda Lemieux and Terry Angel about animal communicators. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it was so wild. I was, uh, I spent hours yesterday calling for her and wandering around looking for her. And, and um, at one point I was sitting on the roof and there's a, thank you, Bernadette. There's a um, telephone wire that, that um, traverses the roof and this little bird it was some kind of finch uh, with a bunch of red on it, like a splotchy little red, red finch bird came and literally talked to me for more than a minute, you know, just was chattering to me. And we just sat there and I, I was talking to the bird. Oh, wow. So... I think I think a time of loss is a time of stepping between dimensions, you know, between uh, between one life and another, between life as um, somewhat predictable, right? Somewhat reliable. And uh, and a change that uh, we haven't yet oriented ourselves to. So a time of loss is a time of redefinition and reorienting ourselves, right? To new circumstances. And right now, um, Right now, for me, it's an unknown because I still hold out the possibility that she may be back. Um, thanks, thanks, Bernadette. Bernadette says, I wish I could give you a hug. We lost our mama cat this week after 16 years. I feel your loss. Bernadette, I'm so sorry for your loss. I know how, for me, Animals have been my best friends pretty much throughout my whole life. And so I'm sure I give voice to the grief that so many of you are feeling or have felt over, over lost loved ones. Thank you so much, Tori. Thank your cat as well for the hugs. Um, So talking about loss, you know, I was talking with some friends, as I said, before Maggie disappeared. And um, it was over loss of, of things that represented memories and also loss of dear, dear people and loved ones. And um, I, I think that in all circumstances, we are meaning making machines. You know, that's what human beings do is we make meaning. And so um, thank you, Bernadette. Bernadette says um, she has a major bird connection. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, and thank you for your wishes. Um, 
I I kind of lost my train of thought there. Um, but in we're meaning making machines and it was such a blessing, as I said, when I called the people who gave Maggie to me, um, that they said, well, she's getting her opportunity to really be a bird, you know, and to really fly free and go higher than a ceiling, you know, and uh, that it was my birthday. And, and they said, well, maybe you can consider that it was Maggie's birthday, too, because she got to really be a bird and um you know the the power of the stories that we create is remarkable you know to uh to be focusing on the loss or to be focusing on the gift that she was to me um to be and to you. I know so many of you got incredible joy from Maggie and um, maybe she'll be back. See, so this is, this is where we can make ourselves crazy, right? Like uh, just bounce it with the, with the unknown, right? So, I don't know if she's still alive. I don't know if she's okay. I don't know if she's coming back. I don't know if she's gone. And so, you know, it's interesting too. I was reading a book uh, called Beyond Biocentricity and I was talking about the double slit experiments with light and um, that proved that life is both uh, light light is both particle and wave and that it's our observation of it that shifts its existence that actually brings it into manifestation uh, as particle or light or you know that brings something into existence and we've been talking about how reality um how reality may be created by a network of observers. And so um, it's interesting because in this moment of unknown place for myself regarding Maggie, um, it's a matter of what reality is gonna materialize, you know? And the uncertainty is, you know, like when somebody or someone, some some situation disappears without closure. Um, uh, there's there's the not knowingness, right? And that that also has its challenge. It puts us in an in an between place, you know, of hopefulness and and despair, right? Or um, an un unresolved place of, of being. Um, Grace Isis, thank you so much for being here. Um, and thank you for your prayers. So Grace Isis says, sweet loving soul, I lift you up in prayer and positive energy. Yes, love birthdays. Wish her to and revel in the memory and attention to, to your dreaming, sending you so much love and light. Thank you, Grace Isis. Thank you. Rosalind says, right, it's hard, Vera, because there is loss, but you're wondering if she's just lost and then worry if she's okay. This must be so hard. I'm worried too. Well, I don't, I don't want to... Um, Thank you, Rosalind. I don't want to be projecting worry. You know, I'd like to be projecting miracles, you know, that she's going to find her way home and she'll be okay. And, and if she doesn't, that she lives a beautiful bird life. Uh, thank you, Grace. Isis says a tear wrapped in pink love for Maggie and you. Thank you. 
Oh boy. So I really, I didn't expect to be crying this whole time, but uh, uh, Grace Lisa says, yes, 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 project miracles. We get to do that together. You know, maybe this is a, a network of observers that can bring miracles into being. Wouldn't that be awesome? I would so love to share that and just be back here with um, Maggie on my shoulder for you and for me, obviously. I think my cat might be relieved, <laughs> at least for the moment, because Maggie was a torturer. <laughs> she would really torment my cat, Jewel. Anyway, um, so I want to I want to talk about loss because one of the people that I was talking to that was experiencing loss and anger and upset and very similar emotions to what I have felt in in a similar situation where someone um, threw away all kinds of um, possessions that were treasured possessions from someone who had passed. And the interesting thing was in this situation that um, the, the possessions that had been thrown away had been thrown away quite some time ago, but this person just learned about it. So it was so raw and fresh and and um, immediate, even though the um, the event had occurred months before. And so the stories that we tell ourselves, you know, to to generate more pain, to generate more sadness or suffering, um, I, I wonder, I wonder about the stories we tell ourselves because this person is also tremendously resilient and historically has been able to just sort of snap into action pretty immediately um, based on the, the demands of the circumstance. And as a result, not really experience the feelings that were there you know and and so i'm i'm in this place where obviously you see there's so much emotion and um you know there's there's fear there's possibility there's sadness there's loss there's grief there's hopefulness you know there's um fear for her uh for her well-being um some guilt i have to say for having her letting her let her get out i don't even know how she got out or when she got out it's just all of a sudden i noticed she wasn't there Grace Isis says, crying, it seems, is the language of the soul, addressing issues in this dimension, asking for guidance and knowing. Thank you for this blessing of rawness, that rallying hearts in the universe towards you with love. Thank you, darling. Thank you, Grace Isis. Thank you so much. I hope that, um, you know, we, we, got, we get to give ourselves permission to feel our feelings, right? And um, and I, I guess as crazy as it is, you know, like I, I feel like I have some level of safety with you guys and I appreciate that tremendously. Um, even though, you know, even though this is a virtual, virtual connection oh anyway um 
I really, I really, Acknowledge all of you for your willingness to be present to your emotions in your own lives as, as they show up, you know, and like the, not the, I mean, sometimes we, we get caught in our stories, right? We get caught in our stories about the meaning of things and, um, The thing, the thing that allows me to move through and beyond these emotions is trusting the perfection of how things unfold. And I think, I think that this loss, whether it's temporary or not, uh, for me, triggered the sorrow over other losses um, and maybe that's maybe that's part of what grief is about is allowing us to um, to it, it, it's sort of, it's such a backwards thought, right? But in this grief that I'm feeling at the moment, what's also been coming up is the other losses. And maybe in a very backward way, it's allowing me to honor and remember. Uh, I would so much prefer to remember and enjoy though, you know, to remember these other people, these other beings, these other beloved pets. I would prefer to remember them and enjoy. Um, yeah, so it's it's fascinating to me how we can hold so many emotions all at once, you know, to hold love and grief and hope and um, presence, you know, all at the same time, you know, to be in the place of possibility and the place of gratitude and appreciation, you know, to have that all occurring all at once you know it's almost it's like all these flashes maybe they don't all occur all at once but they occur in this rapid fire sequence right so thank you Tori who says stay strong and Christina says we are humans meant to have all of the human feelings. We are here to be on the earth and have an earthly human experience. Some get caught up in ascending to a different experience when we are here as humans. So much love and holding space for you. Thank you, Christina. And thank you, Elaine, for the blessings. So uh, I, I think I'm gonna call it a day. I'm so grateful to you for your support and your love. And let's let's see what we can do about manifesting miracles, shall we? I mean, I have one particular miracle in mind and um, would so love to have Maggie find her way home healthy and whole. And, uh, Anyway, I just so appreciate your support and your love and being here together with me. So lots of love to you. Thank you.